artist books and cookies. Come on, open. All right, whatever. All right. I love that you have that a few up there. Okay. Okay, so um, I thought uh, it'd be great to have this conversation with you because um, we've actually been kind of, I guess, this conversation about the magazine project didn't just start like a minute ago, but actually like last year, I think in maybe February or I forget exactly when it was that you're working on it. And I got this email kind of out of the blue saying, hey, do you know of any like really large artist books? And um, there, you didn't really ex go into like why you were asking, you were just like, oh, can you think of any? And you know, I like, you know, was just thinking, oh, well, what really big artist books that I know about? And I mean, there were like some obvious examples like Anselm Kiefer, you know, or like, um, then I thought of like this one artist, you know, I don't know if it even qualifies an artist book, but the other Vietnam Memorial, War Memorial that Chris Burden made where he like, you know, created, generated, had computer generated names to kind of commemorate the dead in the Vietnam War. But you know that wasn't really what you were looking for, and then I was kind of pleasantly surprised to discover, like at the you know like um, uh, Barnstall, like the actual final product, you know the the American magazine. And then this year we you know got to see the second issue of the magazine, which is now on display, fresh from the Whitney, right? Just just came back this yeah. week. Last week, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about you know like maybe this current issue of the magazine and like issue two. Um, like, you know, how it came about and, you know. Well, do you want to hear it? how issue one, what happened with issue one? Or yeah, do you, maybe, should we go straight to issue two? Well, maybe, yeah, maybe we could look at, you know, some of issue one um, for okay. people who... Missed it? Yeah, missed it. Okay. And we also have a maquette for it here, so we can pass this around at some point. So, I'm not sure if I should... We have to talk into the mic. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. I'm not sure if I should start at the way back beginning, mm -hmm. but um, I'm, I've been making a lot of self-published publications for a long time, mm -hmm. and I started doing a project photographing megachurches in, I think around like 2009, 2010, I started photographing, um, I'm gonna show some of these images, megachurches with a four by five view camera, and thinking about their architecture as being kind of like boring or corporate or generic or not as inviting as you might hope that a church might be. And so I was making these photographs and wondering how best to display these pictures. And I really didn't want to make framed images, but I wasn't sure what I did want to make until I realized, or until I started thinking about my other work being based in publications which made me think maybe I should just make a publication of them and what better way to display images that are 30 by 40 than making a very giant zine to hold them. So it was really started as a way to present images of these large buildings that I didn't want to make into framed photographs and trying to like integrate um, part of my practice, which was publishing, with another part of my practice, which is making these kind of like pretty pictures. So these are some of the, the, first, the first batch, and none of these made it into American Magazine 1, but they were kind of the beginning of the project. You might recognize this one. It's really close to here, off the 10. Did that answer any of your question? Yeah, so okay. I mean, so you started with these pictures of the zines and it was kind of like almost um, a kind of a, an exhibition question, like you had these images, but then what did you want right. to do with them? Right. Where did you want to go with them? And, you know, um, then you hit on the idea of making the zine, but like, you know, why, you know, the particular, because you said, I'm going to, I think, I think you did mention you were going to be making these, I, you said something like, I'm thinking five foot tall book. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's really big mm -hmm. um, at the time. And um, it made more sense after, like when I found out like about, can you explain maybe like why it's the, the size that it is? Like It's the size that it is because I have access to a 64 inch Epson inkjet printer mm -hmm. and 60 inch paper is the largest double sided paper that is manufactured. So that was a max, that maxed out the size Mm -hmm. of one dimension 
and then the other dimension is it's a, a half letter size, so an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper folded in half mm -hmm. times I think seven or something. So it's just um, a scaled up version of kind of a, a pretty common size zine. Mm -hmm. So that's where the size came from. It's basically the biggest zine I can make okay. with yeah. what I have available to me. Yeah. And then like the, the actual layout of the magazine itself mm -hmm. is pretty interesting because it, you, know, like, you go and visit all of these different mega churches, mm -hmm. but then there's also a narrative that <coughs> accompanies it where you, you know, describe each one and kind of there's incidents where you know, it's like most of the photographs are kind of like this where there's no one there, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, they're all... Like kind of empty, yeah. yeah. Except for the cover, I guess, where there's yeah. The cover photo typically on this one and on the other one is different than any other kind of picture on the inside. So mm -hmm. in this one, there's people, and the one on on the table, there's a cat. Mm -hmm. So it's always like a little bit different. Yeah. And so you have this kind of um, these photographs, and then you insert it into the actual layout, um, and there's the narrative. Do you want some of the narrative? Yeah. Let's. Okay. Take a look so. at that because I think it, I mean, it really changes the feel, you know, once you start seeing the images kind of in the context of the zine itself. So, this is the American Magazine number mm -hmm. one cover, and these people just asked me to take their picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I did. Uh -huh. And weirdly, um, he had a camera failure, and uh -huh. so they prayed for me, and so then I took another <laughs> picture, and it uh -huh. worked fine, yeah. and I put him on the cover. And did you have a conversation with them about what you were doing, about the project? Or oh, anything? yeah, they thought it was fabulous. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, okay. they thought it was great that I was taking pictures of churches. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the pages of that magazine are just the photographs of churches with kind of a just narrative about my experience being there, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's kind of like a descriptive travelogue, kind of, you know, they're arranged more or less by state, I think, right? Like the... Yeah, pretty much. I, it's pretty much like the, kind of the dumbest order, which is the order I took them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then, you know, it was, I remember seeing it at the Municipal Art Gallery, and, you know, like there, at the time that I saw it, I, there was like, I think no one was there, so then I ended up just turning the pages or something, and then someone maybe came along and said, oh, you're not supposed to do that, let me do it, yeah. or something like that. Um, but at, because no one was there, I got to kind of t spend some time with it and take a look at it, and it was mm -hmm. pretty interesting to see how the variations in this. Um, and, you know, it was kind of interesting for me to see, you know, like, the, the choices that you made, ultimately, and kind of how to present this body of work, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also, it's a very different experience of these images because, I mean, if it's, it's one thing to have, like, you know, like, I mean, when you have a photography project, there's very common strategies for displaying things. I mean, you can display it as a grid, on a wall, you can display it as a line, you know, but then to have this with the accompanying text, it kind of totally changes and really slows down mm -hmm. the, the absorption of the images, you know. Um, to have the kind of your narrative or your description of your encounter with it. And it, in some ways, makes it much more kind of palpable, like, you know, what it was like for you to actually go there and take these photographs, you know, in situ. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something, like, very personal about, about that narrative. I think that kind of, despite the fact that there is, as far as I'm aware of, there are no other zines that are five feet tall, um, there's something that, about the personal nature of that kind of narrative that makes it a zine and kind mm -hmm. of in the feel, the tone of the Yeah, it's very much a zine. I mean, it's completely handmade, you know, yeah. copied one page at a time, stapled together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it, 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 I think of it very much as a zine. It's just, I wanted exhibition quality photographs mm -hmm. in a zine format. Yeah. So it was kind of a solution, like a real dumb solution, but then in the end, like, it works. Mm -hmm. And it's like a zine in that you printed these all yourself. I mean, it wasn't like you took it to a yeah. shop or anything like that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I didn't, but I did. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And I mean, that in itself is kind of interesting because, I mean, if you, uh, if, for those of you who haven't had a chance to look at the zine, over there, you can see like the uh, the printing quality is pretty amazing. I mean, it's kind of technology in terms of what it allows mm -hmm. for you know artists to do now, you know, kind of in their own studio as opposed to having to outsource yeah. it to someone is pretty incredible. Um, 
so that's kind of interesting, you know, that it allows you to produce something that's almost kind of like basically professional quality, um, but, you know, without... Right, but there are also our mistakes, like mm -hmm. sometimes the words get cut off or... So it's really hard to, to make the first side and the second side mm -hmm. totally in line. So yeah. sometimes they're a little off or mm -hmm. sometimes there's like... Th for some reason, like some ink blob will get on it, or you know, you can get away with all of that because yeah. it's a zine. Mm -hmm. So that handmade quality, I think, goes into the production and and then what it looks like. Yeah, and there's a way in which, like, you know, making a zine about mega churches is it's kind of like itself, like a travel log of mm -hmm. mega churches itself, kind of like almost like a paradox or a contradiction, right? Because it's like you you obviously don't particularly like these mega churches, you know. That was kind of yeah, I mean, they're creepy uh -huh. to me. Yeah, and then you were saying there was something, though, like, I mean, part of why you decided to do the magazine as opposed to, you know, um, displaying them kind of by themselves is, like, that That was really interesting. Could you say, could you, like, talk a little about that? I had done, can I show yeah. another picture? Yeah, sure. Okay, so bef before I shot Mega Churches, I was shooting small freestanding businesses. So this was a photo project I had been doing um, for like five years or something, just showing these kind of small places that um, paint their own shingles and they're freestanding. That's actually, a, it's a business making explosives, but they don't have a sign. <laughs> um, but this is the first one that I shot, and this is on York Boulevard, might still be there. And I started mm -hmm. noticing these businesses when I started riding my bike around LA a lot yeah. and realized that there's all these places that I had never seen driving 30 miles an hour, mm -hmm. but driving, you know, biking at like 10 miles an hour, you notice really small places. And so I started photographing these and in around 2008, you know, when the election was happening, mm -hmm. there was, and, and there still continues to be, a, I think, a lot of conversation about ideas of small business and small business people. Mm -hmm. But then there's also like the opposite in our political spectrum is to talk about um, faith and family. Mm -hmm. And so the megachurches for me were sort of an architectural representation of that end of the political spectrum, yeah. while the small businesses were a representation of you know, this other end. And so the, I wanted to shoot the megachurches to complement the small business series, but when I started making these pictures, I realized I, I, don't, I don't want to sort of heroize or put on mm -hmm. a pedestal these this kind of architecture that I actually don't find very appealing. Yeah. I do find the small businesses mm -hmm. in, an amazing, um, you know, American iconoclastic kind of yeah. um, structure. Mm -hmm. And so making 30 by 40 pictures that really like um, elevates them, I, I found uh, correct. Mm -hmm. But making 30 by 40 prints of mega churches and being in a whole room with them, I just found upsetting. Mm -hmm. So I chose to figure out another way to present these images. So, so that that's, you could like... So that was, that was the backstory on like how the magazine came to be. Yeah, and then like, I mean, I guess when it's a book, you can also close it and then put it away and then right, you don't have to right, look at right, it. Right, right, right. And you can only see a few at a time. It's not like going into a room with... I think there's like 50 photographs of mega churches in that magazine. Mm -hmm. So if you went into a room with 50 30 by 40 photographs of mega churches, it would be a very different feeling than going into a room with this kind of homemade publication. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting you talk about kind of like, you know, the, the way that you encountered these small businesses um, on your bicycle, you know, um, because mm -hmm. I think there was the one image that you, um, we saw where you were showing like the process and for the mega churches, it wasn't at all a kind of like a process no. where you were bicycling around and yeah. encountering these spaces. It was like, looked like it was much more like a, a planned out kind of. Yeah. Do you want to see that photo? Yeah. This place, I think, is for sale, if anyone's interested. It's a giant tamale, and it's on Whittier. I saw it. It's it was, pretty great. Yeah, it was listed on the real estate recently. Um, where's the picture of the megachurches? Uh, it's in Arizona. Yeah, this is how the megachurch um, project went. It, I, had to, I had a database that I used that lists all of the megachurches in America, mm -hmm. and so when I go to different cities, I would kind of map it out mm -hmm. in the map book. Because I, <laughs> I don't know, I can't figure out the Google Maps with the dots on the phone. It's, uh -huh. 
anyway, so yeah, this is the process. So it's like a very churches. different like experience yeah. of the geography of it. I mean, and, and this wasn't, I mean, these weren't necessarily places that you were familiar with. Like you went to places that you don't necessarily spend any time in. Doing, yeah. Like, well, I would go like, I went to Detroit, I was visiting someone. So then I was like, hey, can I borrow your car and go shoot mega churches for uh -huh. two days? And, you know, I was visiting someone in Arizona. So it was a lot of visiting. Mm -hmm. Like. I'm a bad house guest. <laughs> Just like, see you uh -huh. later. I gotta go photograph some churches. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. And so it's like you know, the way that you're experiencing like the the place is you know kind of like by doing this advanced scouting and then mapping. Yeah, and it's totally different because the 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 small businesses. Mm -hmm. It's just riding around, seeing them, and then going back and checking and photographing them. Whereas the the mega churches, I'm consulting a database, I'm mm -hmm. mapping it out. I go to the Google Street View to check it out before I go, make sure you know it looks imposing enough or mm -hmm. that it's actually there, because mm -hmm. sometimes these addresses are wrong. Yeah. So it is a very different process. Mm -hmm. And, it, and the, the final result, I think, you know, is fairly different too. I mean, the small businesses, they, you know, there's, it feels like there's much more variety in terms of how the buildings themselves appear. Whereas the mega churches, like they're, I mean, the mega churches, they're different. I mean, they take different shapes and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, mega churches, they have a lot of very different kind of architecture, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. The small businesses are much more just, I mean, it's an individual making decisions, so it's really different than a committee yeah. or an architect making decisions. But. Yeah. And in some ways, I mean, there's also, I guess, like an economic kind of connection between small businesses and megachurches because, like, in some ways, you know, like the megachurch is made possible by kind of like this plentiful real estate mm -hmm. that, you know, in places where real estate is cheap because businesses haven't been able to succeed or flourish, right? Like, I mean, and you even hear, I think recently there was something about um, malls like that have become derelict are being taken mm -hmm. over by churches and mm -hmm. turned into like these megachurch things, you know? Wow. So, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like these buildings were all built as churches yeah. first. But some of them, I'm sure, like this second Ebenezer does not look exactly welcoming. Uh -huh. But there are strip mall ones, like I know, wait, where is this one, the Harvest Bible Chapel is like a giant warehouse and then they sort of like cancered on a little chapel. Mm -hmm. um, but some of them are strip malls, maybe not so many in this book. This one is, the, oh no, that's a big warehouse building, that Christ that Fellowship. Half the other page looked kind of like it might have been a mall oh, or something. This one, the the yeah. one in the middle. Yeah, or the top one. No, the top one is. That was a church, really. Yeah. So weird. They all look like commercial architecture. I know they're so crazy looking. Did you go in into them? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you decided to leave that out. I talk about going in. I think I can't mm -hmm. remember what I say in this, but yeah, sometimes I would go inside. Yeah. I mean, I found this Calvary one, that's a strip mall. Mm -hmm. I found really early on that if you ask permission, mm -hmm. you're going to be denied it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to photograph, yeah. to well, ask permission to photograph, you will be denied it. So I yeah. didn't, I just. Well, there was yeah. that, yeah, and there's for, I forget which one, but for one of them, you even talk about like kind of being in the parking lot and someone kind of chases you or kind of was like. Yeah, there was a you. few instances of that. Yeah. But with the four by five, you know, you have a big tripod, and so it's you're much more uh, visible. But I was shooting these with a, like a medium format digital camera, so mm -hmm. I wasn't always using a tripod. It's a lot quicker way to work, and so actually, it's this one, this middle one in Phoenix. They kicked me out. Some people in a golf cart got all mad uh -huh. at me. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, the, I was kind of interested also, you know, because I mean, so. Um, I've known about your work, you know, for a while now, and um, one of the things that you know um, we have in common is we both like bicycling, and mm -hmm. you know, I was kind of intrigued in the way that bicycling kind of works its way into your practice, mm -hmm. um, and the way that it kind of also informs the way that you experience the landscape, and that becomes you know part of the small biz. And you know, I'm going to maybe show this, um, which was a postcard that you had made, right, um, and. It's of, actually of a church, but it's not a mega church. It's just kind of a little small parish, I guess. Um, and this was kind of like when you were traveling across the country, right? It was like it was in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And you were here. You were actually kind of like traveling, doing trips by bike, and then kind of exper 
exploring these places? Is no, no, it wasn't. There's no, okay. it was a rental car. Oh, it was a rental car. But yeah. Okay, okay, because it does feel like much more kind of intimate and kind yeah. of like this is what you're seeing, and then you're going to kind of record it. Um, and it was kind of interesting this, to hear about the way that you know there's this contrast between the small businesses, which are basically here, mm -hmm. and that you're kind of encountering in your everyday life, and then the mega church project, which kind of is much more automobile driven, mm -hmm. and you know kind of much more about anonymous mapping and kind of like this kind of geography, you know, mm -hmm. kind of urban geography. And um, since, you know, we have um, a couple of the Rouché books um, in the display in the back, um, uh, Nine Swimming Pools and Hard Light, I think, are there. Um, I, you know, kind of put in mind, like, kind of the contrast between, you know, your work and kind of mm -hmm. this publication and magazine and Rouché's handling of architecture yeah. in the urban land landscape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely, do you want to look at these? Yeah. Oops, sorry. There you go. So like, you know, um, this is the maquette for every building on, on the Sunset Strip, which was a 1966 book that Rouché made um, of every building on the Sunset Strip, right? Um, the book itself is kind of an unfolded. Uh, when you, you unfold it, it's like a 20 foot, 25 foot long uh, accordion fold book. And it basically, you know, was for, he shot it from a, a pickup truck. That's him with a mustache. This is a later shoot, not 1960s. Um, and, you know, it was very much a kind of an automobile driven project. And, you know, it's interesting how, and this is real estate opportunities, which in some ways kind of bears a resemblance, more of a resemblance, I guess, to your, your work. Um, but, you know, it's kind of interesting how the, the mode of transport itself becomes or integrated into the aesthetics of the, the, the book, mm -hmm. you know, and your book, you know, um, or the photographs, you know, how that kind of the mode of transport kind of finds its way in mm -hmm. as well, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have, like, any particular feelings about Rouché's projects or... Um, I mean, I have been a fan of his work for a long time and I, I like the kind of the, the personal and kind of pedestrianness mm -hmm. of his practice um, and how he's just interested in one kind of building or, or lack of building or what have you and then goes out and photographs you know many kinds that way and, and not in the sort of uptight German way but mm -hmm. in this kind of laid back American version of it and so yeah. I, I definitely have been inspired by his work and mm -hmm. I did at one point go back to all of these places and real estate opportunities to see if anyone had built on those vacant lots or if they were still opportunities mm -hmm. and I did photograph all of them uh -huh. at one point so I, I feel like and I was telling John earlier like every artist has their Rouché like ripoff project mm -hmm. and that was mine yeah I mean, and it's kind of interesting, like, you know, Rouché, I think when at the point when he was making these books in the 60s, what there wasn't like necessarily a model for mm -hmm. making artist books in that way, but it's almost become like a paradigm for the artist book, like, you know, artists, when they're interested in books, like, oh, there's Rouché, you know, and then there's right. a few other people. Um, but, like, there's ways in which it overlaps with your work and ways in which it very clearly differs, like, you know, like in his work, there's almost never very much text, you know, like there's yeah. just addresses and real estate opportunities, right? Um, whereas in the magazines, there's a, you know, a lot of this narrative, like that's built into it. Um, yeah. And I'm more neurotic, I think. <laughs> I think it's more, yeah. Uh -huh. But there's also like, I mean, it's, yeah, okay, maybe that, but then there's also a way in which um, like you have um, a kind of, um, I mean, like the humor is like a very different sense of humor like magazine one you know American magazine like bigger and better is kind of like there's mm -hmm. a satirical element to mm -hmm. it and it I mean Rouché at least you know when you talk to him you know he says he has this kind of a fondness for these kind of vernacular buildings um, which you do too um, but like your relationship to the architecture is is like itself a little different. You know? I don't know. I feel like his work is really funny in its absurdity as well. Like mm -hmm. he has a really dry sense of humor. Yeah. And as an artist book, and may maybe I don't know if this is true, but mm -hmm. it feels like you know these came from a time where prior to that an artist book might be a little more futzy, mm -hmm. and this is like a very industrialized version of an artist book. It's yeah. mass produced. It's printed. Yeah. But it's also very it's very dry. It's mm -hmm. not like decorated or. 
Yeah. You know, it's just real basic conceptual mm -hmm. idea of what a book is. Yeah. And I, I feel like I definitely am inspired by that aesthetic. Yeah. You know, this kind of plain speaking mm -hmm. kind of aesthetic to just yeah. but 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 yeah, my my sort of adornment is way too much text probably. Mm -hmm. But know. well, I mean, but it's also part of like I think the other strand of where your editorial practice comes from, which is more like the zine tradition, right? Mm -hmm. Which is about kind of like mm -hmm. finding a certain form of expression. Mm -hmm. And it is like it's it takes the Rouché model, but then it also adds the kind of the handmade or the kind of the, you know, like you, mm -hmm. yours are all basically self-published, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's something to that too, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't, I mean, there's a way in which I think like, you know, and this is what I find interesting about your work is like, you know, there's like, I think the work that you're perhaps best known for are the sweaters with the slogans, mm -hmm. but there's like kind of an overall interest in text, like mm -hmm. in your work and the different modes that text finds itself, you know, like expressed. So there's like the zines, but then there's also like tracks Right, you know? but I would argue that all of those are just other modes of self-publishing, mm -hmm. so that the sweaters are also an idea kind of self-publishing, self that uh -huh. you're publishing, you're making yourself public mm -hmm. in a way, which yeah. is what self-publishing is, and, mm -hmm. and wearing a sweater in public is like another method of circulating ideas or text mm -hmm. in, a, in a very similar way that a zine, handing out a zine, yeah. is circulating your text and your images as well, mm -hmm. so I kind of think of them all as the same. Yeah. Okay. So do you have like any particular feelings about like the kind of like because I feel like in the last few years zines have become like extremely popular as mm -hmm. a mode of production, you know, mm -hmm. for I mean both for people who maybe self-identify as artists and people who don't, who just kind of are mm -hmm. interested in zine culture in and of itself. Like is that I don't know. I I mean I don't yeah, I don't know much about or I, I wasn't like part of I'm not so much part of zine culture. Mm -hmm. I make publications. Mm -hmm. And I usually just give them to my friends or, you know, sell them somewhere. But I, mm -hmm. I'm not like, yeah, I'm not so much a zine star or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. I mean, I, I'm psyched that uh -huh. people are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. I don't know. I feel like there's always been, I don't know if there's, I don't know about a resurgence. It feels like it's always been happening. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, yeah, there's definitely always been this kind of, like, zine. A zine cult, world. Yeah, yeah. A zine world. But then, like, you know, to see, like, for instance, like, the artist book fair, the art book fair oh, yeah, has yeah, become, yeah. like, totally. I think people just don't read blogs anymore. Like, you oh, do, really? I don't know, do they? Do you guys read blogs? I feel like <laughs> a lot of people for a long time were, like, writing blogs, and then people were reading the blogs, and then everyone was like, why do I want to be on the computer all the time? So then people started, like, publishing and, like, making things that are more, like, handmade again. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like definitely like nice to see. It's great to see zines because, like, I feel like you know, like um, earlier during the art book, you know, review like presentation, Andrew was talking about like you know the art book review as a way for people to get their hands on these kind of very mm -hmm. like fancy art books. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's definitely I feel like there's been so many of those now, and it's like you know, and they get you know, they're on nice glossy paper and they're, but they're also very expensive and it's like mm -hmm. become like this own kind of commodity form. And it's nice to see like, you know, that there are people who, you know, can just kind of bypass that or just kind of can do without that and make their own mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, there's something that feels a little more genuine in some ways, you know, to be making, I mean, maybe you're not part of like the larger zine culture, but in some ways what you're doing is kind of like the essence of zine making, right? It's like you're making it for people Yeah, I mean, that that's know. a larger conversation in the art world about people making their own stuff versus mm -hmm. people having it made. made yeah. Um, so it feels like that conversation is, is maybe more a conversation that I'm a part of yeah. um, with my work is mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm sort of insisting on, on making a lot of it or most of it. Or, yeah. 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 Whereas, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that, that ties in with publishing, but I feel like that's that's really important to me mm -hmm. is the ability and to to make stuff yeah and also i mean like and maybe this connects to like the idea what you were saying about like making it for for your making your publications for your friends is you know um one of the things that really you know strikes me about the the publications you do make is that you know um 
and maybe this builds on what you were saying about your sweaters, there's a kind of performative aspect to mm -hmm. it. So like with the magazines, um, maybe you can show the, the, the page turners. Like you actually have uniforms that... Is it in here? I think sweater, or no, it's like, yeah. Oh, here there it we is. go. Yeah, so... There's Elise and Remy. Yeah. My mega girls. Um, <laughs> yeah. So these are the turn the the kind of the T-shirts for the first issue, right, of mm -hmm. American Magazine, and, and then, then the second issue was. Where are they? I think maybe it's the third image. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah there we go. Oops, these are the the ladies at the Whitney. They never sent the sashes back, which is why Alex is not wearing one. He's turning the pages. <laughs> But um, yeah, they have they have uniforms. Yeah, I mean it's it's like it's a funny format because you can't really it's hard to read. Mm -hmm. It's easier if you have someone else turn the pages. Yeah. So there's that, but then there's also the way in which you like you also have been involved in making publications in conjunction with events. Mm -hmm. So for the Venice Beach Biennale. You were the one. Who, you were part of a group of people. You were well. You were kind of like the organizer of it, right? Like the of the zine that that yeah. one. Um, yeah. And also high desert test sites. I mean, yeah. you did four of the something things? like that. Yeah. yeah. I did the, the the early high desert test site ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, because making publications is part of my practice, mm -hmm. so yeah, I was asked to. Mm -hmm. make a publication as part of those events yeah. then if you're making the publication that's like the official kind of a project within the event it mm -hmm. sort of becomes the official voice of the event that was a weird thing that happened with with especially with high desert test sites mm -hmm. why why weird well it's just like i was asked just like every other artist who, who was asked to be in that initial high desert test sites i was just mm -hmm. asked to do a project mm -hmm. and my project was the publication and the publication was about all the other projects so mm -hmm. because I was doing a publication about all the other projects mm -hmm. I was in touch with all of the artists yeah which made me like a point person mm -hmm. and then I became like this kind of accidental organizer of the event uh -huh. because of my participation as the publication maker yeah so. but that's like in some ways like feeds direct like it's yeah exactly what you're talking about where you're like you're the publication is for the small community of people yeah right? yeah and yeah so. yeah I like I like publications that are for really tiny communities. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's great. Um, well, so I don't know. We have some, we actually have extra copies while we were kind of prepping. Yeah, of, we have copies um, of bookshelf. Bookshelf too. So maybe we can pass these around. And we're also I think open to opening the conversation to all of you out there. So if you have any questions, I think Chris is supposed to walk around with uh, Mike. Wireless, um, wireless, mic. wireless mic for anyone who has a question. So, hi. I want to um, hear a little more about the content of this new magazine, about your relationship with the concept of the psychic, and the, I don't know if you can give us a little more. Um, when I was doing the small business photographs, my favorite one in the series is the psychic. And so after I did the mega churches, which was really about this, like people being spiritual together, I decided to kind of do the opposite, which was the psychics, which is this kind of individual spiritualism or individual like communication with the supernatural or something. So it seemed to be like, I kind of like this idea of jumping from one thing to another, like going from the small businesses to the giant churches, and then from the giant churches kind of back to the small businesses, but, but sort of via you know, the, another, another kind of road, so going to the psychics. And so I've, I really love those storefront psychics that are all over everywhere. Um, I'm mystified by them because no one seems to ever be in those places, or very rarely are people actually open for business, even when their sign is blinking open. And so I was just interested in that um, kind of architecture, kind of signage, kind of idea that people would go to these kinds of places. And, and the text of this 
magazine is all readings that I had with psychics. And they're only in one case psychics that I photographed their buildings. Most of the psychics are ones that were recommended to me by friends. Does that answer your question? Okay. I was just had a logistical question and I was wondering if the magazines are only available in that format and then the only way to see them is with those readers or if there seems like there is a smaller version on the desk. There is a smaller version on the desk, but it's, maybe it just got stolen. It's floating around. There was one. <laughs> um, yes, they are only available as magazines. The smaller version on the desk was my proof copy to sort of go over the text, and if, if, it, if it gets to you, if it doesn't walk out, um, you'll see it's just like marked up with typos and, and just to sort of see the, yeah. It's like a very appropriate kind of format, you know, it's like almost confronting you the with... The big one or the little one? The big one. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know. It's fun to have a giant magazine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a fun thing. It's like ridiculous. But yeah, they're only available big. You want one? There's circul <laughs> circulation five. <laughs> he'll Becca, put in a re do you have he'll a question, reserve Becca? a copy. You just giving me shit? <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could talk maybe about the discovery process when you're like how when once you started noticing the small businesses, is it something that you just can't ignore anymore? Or you see it everywhere? Or is it something that you dedicate a particular time to like, going and hunting them out? Or? It is something that you can't ignore after you've already been obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You. Yeah. No, I still, some of the ones like the tamale and, and that, um, the Spice It Up lingerie store are really recent ones. I mean, I, I started photographing those in 2003, the small businesses, and I still, when I see one, I'm like, I gotta go back and shoot that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but you definitely, like, it infects you. Was that how you knew that that one was still, was available for sale? The tamale? Yeah. I think it was on Curb Deli or something. Oh, okay. And I didn't go looking. <laughs> but that is a recent photograph. Okay. I shot that. Um, I did a bike trip down Whittier Boulevard. And shot a bunch oh. down there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Is that it? Can you say a little, oh. other questions? Or no. can you say a little about like maybe future? Because this is going to be an oh. ongoing thing, right? Like, yeah. This is a. The number three is either going to be. I want it to be larger than life cats, but I need to shoot a lot of cats, and <laughs> I haven't started yet. So. I may do number three about small businesses because I have a lot of those images. I'm not sure. Okay. Options. Okay. Options. Every time I make one, I swear I'll never do it again because <laughs> it's a real pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like, I one thing I was noticing today actually, because yeah. I remember when you wrote me th that message asking if, if I knew of any like examples of big publications. Yeah. I, I like, I think I said something like, Oh, um, yeah, here's the ones I know about. Um, you're going to have to, like, find some really big staples. And it's kind of interesting that yeah, you had to actually, yeah. you know, like, m create the staples yeah. that go into the magazines, right? Because it's yeah, not like... they're handmade staples. <laughs> yeah. So, you can see why it'd be... Yeah, it's a hard. pain. Uh -huh. But thank you for okay. making them. Yeah, and thanks. thank you. Thanks yeah. for listening and coming and checking it out. Yeah. yeah.